I oh, better get those feet tapping, fingers snapping, all hands clapping. Buckle up, gobble some popcorn. It's the Mickle Pot and Pickle with Mickle. And here we go. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Mickle Pod, a podcast show unlike any other. Yes, welcome to the show. This show is unlike any other. One show to keep you in the know. Two shows in one. One under. That's where Eldrick Tiger Woods is at the Masters. Well, he's in the freaking straw on 13 when he resumes play today. He and a host of others will finish round one on this fine Friday. A host of notable names for sure who surely need to get in gear as we head to the weekend. The wind picks up. And how apropos is that it's National Big Wind Day. Everyone is going for that big win, the Green Jacket, a major championship. At Augusta, even though it is National Grilled Cheese Day, you better go for that pimento cheese or egg salad. Traditional classics still offered for $1.50. Speaking of old traditional classics, did you hear Tom Brady says he's not opposed to coming back. He should have waited till today to leak that news and he could come on this show to do it. Today is national for 12 days. So for the love of all 12s, Tommy boy, stay retired. Work on that third shot drop. This is a masterful weekend of pickleball. So in case you missed it, Ben Johns was dropped by the Dwanger in Houston. Am I the only one that was shocked to find out that breaking pickleball is not the story of a former pickle prodigy who finds out they are terminally ill and turns to a life of crime to take one last shot at a triple crown? There is action to get to on the court, new paddles dropping like they're hot, and most say they are. Some like it hot, great song by Power Station, the Super Group, featuring Robert Palmer and the Taylors from Duran Duran. The Super Group, that are the honorary starters at the Masters, Nicholas Watson, player, they are not too happy with these tour wars that show no signs of ceasefire as we get into round two at Augusta. It remains unclear the way, if at all, 54 tour guys can start to come back to the PGA Tour. And it still seems clear that the PGA is going to find a way to get that PIF money. Woo! 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 Ow! Love that money! Everyone gets to come together at the majors, right? Tell that to Taylor Gooch, who can be seen in Australia at the next 54 Tour event. I do not have the answer. I know I watch a lot less golf than I did before. I know I will tune into the majors. I know that the 54 Tour has some of the best golfers in the world, the guys you want to watch, just like me. I know something we all knew heading into Augusta, and right after this quick beard break, let's stretch our legs and walk down Magnolia Lane. Scheffler, Homa, Hatton, Fleetwood. What do they all have in common? They all have beards, man. Take care of your beard at ValhallaBeardAndBody.net. Use promo code MIC15 at ValhallaBeardAndBody.net. In my nine to watch on the back nine Sunday, Scheffler was not on the list. I know. This Scotty Scheffler doesn't know. He just shows and goes. The 2022 Master Champion has said he will go if wife Meredith goes into labor, which is unlikely. It's not unlikely to think that after that quick start, 32 on the back, Scheffler will go wire to wire, winning the 88th edition of the Masters, his second major, and his second green jacket. Is it more likely to think that even Scotty is going to come back to the field a little bit as the weekend draws near and some of these other guys will give charge? 
Seven in the top 10 have not even finished their first round. They're getting that done right now. Remember, told you Eldrick was over there in the straw with Jason Day. And then there are the other guys. Guys who will be in round two. We expect to be there on Sunday. Guys who need to step it up. Guys who we are saying there's a chance. After one day, there's always a chance. And that's what makes this so fun. Jordan Spieth has a green jacket and uh, what I say, work to do. In my mind, if you're already plus three and starting round two, you're finished. Enjoy the pimentos and egg salad. How about some other guys and some flop shots at some guys who just might hang around? First, the top. DeShambles, he's won a major. We know he can play. We know he can hit the ball far. We know he likes to calculate out there on the course. What I need to know is can he keep putting? People, this is the number one factor heading into the weekend. If you want to win a major, you have to be able to putt those greens. The greens! The weather might keep some guys from doing much today. Then we get to the weekend. And the weekend is the weekend. And what the weekend does to golfers at Augusta is just what it does. Now, I'm not going to bet against Scheffler. I don't want to jinx him either. Typically, he comes through the field and wins. Just saying. These are only my opinions. Remember, and opinions vary. Just go ahead and take out Hogard, Fox, An, and Pavone. In the minus ones, I'm a Tiger guy. Whatever it takes for Tiger to keep it going, if he can even get close for Sunday, we are all better for it. It's kind of like when you meet Tim Tebow. Let me also say, it does not matter if a guy has not finished that first round. Strike that. Reverse it. It does matter if a guy has not finished that first round. Rory, Cam Smith, the minus ones are right where they want to be. 15 are going to be at minus one when play resumes today like it has. And I see you out there, Tony Finau, Victor Hovland, Kurt Kitayama. I'm watching you. And I know some of those were in my nine to watch. At plus one, if you're one over, it's work to do. Dustin Johnson, Morikawa, Kepka. How will they close out that first round and get into their second round? How about defending champion John Rahm? How is he going to rebound after that 73? He was ready to snap clubs and just get out of there yesterday. It's going to be awesome. Justin Thomas, Xander, Harris English, even when round two starts, can Sergio whirl his way to Sunday? The shark is swimming around the grounds in support of his 54 tour players. Let's reseed it or something like that. After two days, Scheffler, a 54-tour guy, or the field. It will be interesting to see the leaderboard, how it's made up on Saturday. Make sure you tune in, stream in, set phasers to stun, whatever you got to do for the back nine on Sunday. That's when the green jacket is won. I think we are all winners today, and it is National Licorice Day, so let the debate rage on. Twizzlers or Red Vines? No debating. We all need a mental break. Then... It's on to Houston. The Mickle Pod and Pickle with Mickle is all new, twice a week, all major podcast app. Earbuds in, popcorn ready, it's back to the show. The Twonger need gold to get it. He will have to face Pickleball's Fed, who is making a home on Championship Sunday. And this should be a fun battle to watch. Early round action saw Casey Campbell doing his thing. Ben Johns getting knocked out of the field is a good thing. He's going to lose sometimes. So will Annalee Whiplash Waters, who has taken this one off. There are a lot of rising stars in this game. On both sides of the net, it's great to see talent squaring off in the, against each other, even if it's in the earlier rounds, as we still see some consistent faces 
on Championship Sunday. However, with Annalie out, Catherine Parenteau out on the women's side, we're definitely going to get to see some uh, new faces potentially emerge up there on the podium. And let's take a sneak peek, right? Uh, the women's final is set. Lee Jansen's going to play Samantha Parker. Like we said, Dwonger's going to get pickleballs fed. In that sneak peek, here are some pairings waiting in mixed doubles. Folks, remember, doubles center stage leading up to Championship Sunday right now. I like this progressive draw format. Hurricane Tyra Black and Dylan Frazier. Look for them maybe to make some noise. Pickleballs fed. Rachel Rohrbacher. Wright Kovala. Of course, Wilson and David. Ben's going to make a run without Anna Lee. What about Paris Todd and Zane Navratil? Can they shake it up? And that's just a few. Uh, how about shout out big let's go to Jack Monroe. I see Matt Mead is going to be taking on Sam Query on the other side of the net in the first round. I see Michael Lloyd and his brother. They've got a big match ahead of them in their first round. And you know I must shout out to any dudes or girls, ladies, women, whatever we need to call them now, who've been on this show, and I'm looking for a lot more to join me on the court. On the women's side, I'm going to call my shot with Anna Bright and Rachel Rohrbacher to take home the gold. That's it. Call my shot. APP is taking a little break, and I need to get back to my MLP Australia coverage. I'm trying to track down some of their players to join me on the court. Speaking of MLP... And you know me. Round one, still set for the ATL. May 9th. That's not very far away. That's not very far away at all, people. It's something I'm excited about. I like the team game. Repetition. Repetition. Remember, that's what helps. The team game. Let me repeat. This is where you grow a sport like pickleball in this humble opinion of mine. Get us into the teams. Free agents coming and going from the doors. Make MLP the place to be. It would be great to see players have a choice to make as the league becomes a league and can afford salaries, etc. I told you, the best wnba -er gets $242,000 per year. What is the first place cash prize for singles, doubles, or mixed in Houston. What's first prize gold? That was an intentional pause. There's a long way to go. And the sport has already come a long way. I'm in for the ride. Players, GMs, owners, fans, we are all in for a ride on that emotional roller coaster. We've got our tickets. We're going to buckle up. Some of us are probably going to puke. The NFL Draft is coming. The NFL Draft is coming. Are you ready for some football? Football. Classic little intro there as I continue to work on our football sounder for the upcoming season. Upcoming is the NFL Draft. The NFL Draft will be in Detroit on April 25th. That's when it's going to begin. It's going to be on TV. The top three QBs who are expected to go one, two, three, they're going to be there. The Bears have that number one pick, all signs point, that it's just a no-brainer. It's going to be Caleb Williams. Let's skip over the Bears. What about my Redskins, the Commanders? What if they traded? Follow me here. What if they trade with the Falcons and can still get Drake May? Would the Patriots mucky up the waters? Would they take Jaden Daniels if he was available at three? My fear, if we pull something like that off, is the Giants could muck it all up and they go up there and grab May or Jaden Daniels. What about that 36 pick, though, that the commanders hold? There's likely to be one of the next, and I used air quotes, great radio, QBs still available. This new organization has a chance to make a statement. They can build a team and then plug in the guy or they can try to have the guy and build the team. Which way is going to work? I'm just not convinced Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, or Drake May is that guy. I like May way more than Jaden Daniels. And I've seen Jaden Daniels' numbers. I've seen his Heisman Trophy. I've seen and watched him play right here in the desert. Washington, be warned. 
The job of any GM and his crew come draft day is not enviable. How many teams, though? How many teams watch draft day before draft day? Who's in that secret society of GMs that get together via Zoom or some shit like that for a draft day, draft day screening just to make themselves feel good before their jobs, their livelihoods are on the line? Marvin Harrison Jr. is not a screen pass catcher and he's about to be out here in the desert. That's another lock. Yes, the Cardinals will take the top-ranked wide out to give Kyler yet another amazing weapon Heading into this season, it's not like he's never had amazing weapons heading into the season in the past. Here's what I know. I don't know if this is the year the Cardinals break past six wins. They've been trying it, right? Of course, we're going to focus on commanders and Cardinals. I mean, there's plenty of time to get into other. And it's all about that quarterback, right? I mentioned the other guys. We have that other guy's theme going today. Great movie. Other guys. Feral. Marky Mark. Awesome. These guys, like Penix, McCarthy, Nix, and there are other guys. Of course, we're focusing on QBs. That seems to be what everybody likes to talk about. I like to talk about it. This J.J. McCarthy rise up draft boards is something to watch. Winning never hurts, and that title has given a shine to his star. And do not be surprised to see a team jump up and make a move to grab J.J. from Michigan. A mistake, possibly. How will he play against competition that is consistently better and faster? I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm saying at Michigan, he didn't have to do it. I'm a Penix guy. Why are not more NFL scouts? He lives in the pocket, can run out when he needs to, and he can flat out chuck it. Like we're starting to say, right? We don't spin it anymore. We can chuck it. It must be the injuries, and I can understand that. I get that. I get that a team in Washington could trade that second pick, bring this guy in, and see what happens. Just so happens that on this day in 1981, NASA launched the first space shuttle. Let's rock it into this weekend of amazing possibilities. Possibly, you can catch up on my recent interview with Terry Smith, a pair of pickler from Scotland. Stay safe out there and stay hydrated. I'll see all y'all right here next time for more.